Sometimes when examiners do these kind of questions, they get them wrong. In this particular case, they've put a mark here for one, whereas here they put a mark here of four. Now, that's perfectly okay. Did you see equilibrium constant expression and give it one mark? That's fine. It shouldn't take you more than 30 seconds to do that. However, in this case, determine the equilibrium concentrations. They gave it a mark of four and they claim, therefore, it can be done in six minutes. If you're very clear headed and you don't make any mistakes, it is potentially possible to do it in seven, eight minutes, I think. To be able to do it in six minutes, I, I think it's close to impossible for most people. Eight minutes or ten minutes is reasonable. So it should have a mark of about six marks or maybe seven marks. And there are various reasons for that. Let me first of all go through how this one should be done. I'll tell you the problems involved in dealing with this one and where you have to make decisions. And that takes time deciding how you're going to handle those decisions. And finally, I will show you how to deal with a question which I believe is so unfair. First thing to do is to write the equation down. It's H2 plus I2 goes to, that's rever reversible arrows, HI, and that's 2. There. And therefore, the equilibrium constant expression Kc equals Hi, it's always the product, and it's squared, that 2 is that 2, over H2 in square brackets times I2 in square brackets. Now, that's something that you could do, in, as I say, in less than 30 seconds. You write the equation down, then you do the expression. Now let's determine the equilibrium concentrations in for hydrogen and iodine and hydrogen iodide. This is where you have to make your first decision. Something has to be an unknown. X and let X equal. The question is, what is going to be the unknown? Is it going to be the concentration of hydrogen equilibrium, concentration of iodine equilibrium? or the concentration of hydrogen iodide at equilibrium. And making that kind of decision can be both time-consuming and nerve-wracking, because you don't know which one's going to be the best assumption to make. And if you make the wrong one, you will in fact end up with a quadratic equation, which you may not be able to solve. And even if you could solve it, it will take you time. The examiners, in their answer, said, let X be the number of moles of hydrogen converted to HI. Hydrogen converted to HI. You may or may not even have thought of that one. Let X be the number of moles of hydrogen converted to X, HI. If you thought of the others, let X equal the volume of hydrogen at equilibrium, or iodine equilibrium, or hydrogen iodide equilibrium, you're going to get the same answer. Your calculation will be different from the examiner's calculation. Once we've done that, that also means X equals the moles of iodine converted to HI. Because the equation they use the same quantity of iodine and hydrogen. And therefore the Moles of HI are 2x, therefore moles HI at equilibrium equal 2x. Now, the important thing to notice is that, let me go back to this equation, is about moles. This expression is about moles per decimeter minus three. So this is about moles and this is about concentrations. It's important to remember the difference. Moles, concentrations. We're going to convert these moles into concentrations. H2, let's put the concentration there. I2 
and I. And we know the volume, they tell us the volume is 2. So what is, we then find what is the number of moles of H2 at equilibrium? Well, we started off with 1.5 times 10 to the minus 2. Of that, x moles was converted to Hi, so there now remains this minus x. Volume is 2, so that is now the concentration. Fortunately for us, the concentration of I2 is the same, 1.5 naught times 10 to the minus 2 minus x over 2. When it comes to the Hi, we know that at equilibrium there's 2x moles, 2x moles, and therefore there's 2x moles, the volume is 2, therefore the concentration is x. So now we have everything, we have the concentrations, and we can put them into the equilibrium constant expression. So Kc equals, now they tell us that that's 53, so we put that down, 53. And that equals the Hi, so that's x squared over concentration of hydrogen. Let's make that longer. And it's 1.5 naught times 10 to the minus 2 minus x over 2. We'll put that in brackets. And then we do the ID, and that's 1.5, it's the same, times 10 to the minus 2 minus x over. Two. Now when I first did this and looked at it, I multiplied all this out and got a quadratic equation. It took me a bit of time to solve it, but I eventually got an answer. And then I realized, of course, that IB students in chemistry are not expected to be able to solve quadratic equations. So I looked back at this and I realized that this is a perfect square. And so you take the square root of that, square root of 53, and that equals x over 1.5 naught times 10 to the minus 2 minus x over 2. And the square root of 53 equals 7.28. And then I solve this, and this is easy. It's an equation in x, where x is the unknown. Value of x, which equals x equals 1.18 times 10 to the minus 2. So then I go back to these. I now, I now know that this is the concentration of hydrogen equilibrium, this is concentration of iodine, and this is the concentration of Hi, and Ixr. So therefore the concentration of Hi equals 1.18 times 10 to the minus 2. Notice the x originally is moles, x is actually moles, but now this number is the concentration of Hi, moles decimeter minus cubed. And then I worked out the concentration of hydrogen, which is that one, and it works out to 1.6, 1.60 times 10 to the minus 3 moles decimeter cubed. And of course, I look and I realize that iodine is the same. I2 equals the same. So you don't have to do that anymore. That is the answer. And if you think clearly about it, you can just do it in six minutes, seven minutes or so. Just. However, there are a number of issues. The first issue, and it's very clear from the examiner's specimen answer there are a number of issues. One is that some students are going to forget to put the two in and fortunately in this particular case it doesn't matter. Fortunately it doesn't matter. You still get the same answers. They may forget about the volumes. I would recommend that you never forget about the volumes. You always put the volumes in. If given, put the volumes in. The second thing is to realize that they've given you this equilibrium constant Kc with a value of 53, but there is another equation that you could have written down. Now most people, I think, would put H2 plus I2 goes to 2Hi. I think most people do that. That gives you a Kc equals Hi, as I've done above, squared over H.
ice, H2I2. However, there is another equation. You could have done a half H2 plus a half I2. I personally wouldn't have done this, but it's potentially possible to do HI. And for that, you get a different KC. KC equals HI over H2 half I2 half. As I said, I don't do this one because I don't like to see these halves there. I much prefer that one. But examiners are okay with halves. So you could get that. And if you give this uh, KC2, call it this KC1, you will see that KC1 equals KC2 squared. One of the mistakes in this question is that they gave you a value of KC and they didn't tell you which equation it belongs to. And when they came to the answers, they realized they had to give a completely different set of answers if you used this equation and used this equilibrium expression instead of that one. There are so many decisions you have to make in this question. I find it very easy to make mistakes. So how do you handle this? Okay, first thing is you realize that there are only four marks there. This is a six minute question. Do not turn it into a 10 minute question or a 15 minute question. If you cannot do this in six minutes, then at the end of six minutes, just stop and move on. There's a total of 90 marks in this paper. Why waste time on a badly written four mark question? Look at the clock, decide when you're going to finish and finish. Doesn't matter what's happened, just finish. Move on to the next question after six minutes. Then later on you can come back. Don't do what some people do. They go on for 10 minutes on this question or 15 minutes on this question and then find that 10 minutes could have been used more valuably elsewhere. There are some questions around. I've seen them in exam papers. They take half the time of this one. There are some questions. You look at them for four marks. You can do them in three minutes or four minutes. Just move on and do those questions. Leave this. Don't worry about it. If you found this YouTube video helpful, then please say you like it and subscribe to my channel and look at my other YouTube videos. Thank you.